Hello friends, uh, Jeffy here. Welcome back to our Hanabu project. If you missed out on the previous videos, you can still watch it by clicking here. Uh, you can see the inbox review. You can also follow us uh, while painting the Hanabu. If you want to acquire one, they're still available. Uh, click on this link or go to our website, that's Corlin.com. So as I explained, uh, last week, uh, or a couple days ago, as, as a matter of fact, we uh, clear coated, the last thing we did was clear coating the whole Hannibal. After painting, we put like a flat coat over it or a polyurethane varnish over it. And after 36, 48 hours of dry time, we're finally, uh, it's finally time to weather. Now, weathering is really what I'm looking forward to. So I'm going to turn this into this by using this. We'll talk a little bit more during the video, but you, sh you can also watch a squadron minute about it. Without further hesitation, let's really get at it. Here we have it. We're gonna do some weathering. What I'm gonna use to start with, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have some oil paint. I'm gonna make a little mix of thinner and oil paint and let it run into some of the panel lines here and around the rivets and around the prominent detail. And then eventually I'm gonna wipe it off and then I'm gonna use like a bigger brush to fade the oils. And it will be self-explanatory and I'll talk and I'll, I'll at least explain while I'm doing it. If you wanna know what I'm using here, it's just a couple of brushes, a couple of fine brushes or good brushes. Again, this is the technique I like to work with and I'm most familiar with, but whatever suits your, your liking, you can use those brushes. You need at least a, a fine brush, then you have to have a number two, I have a number four, and a number six. Quadrant has a bunch in stock of different sizes, especially the fine ones from Vallejo and so on. Other ones, you might have to stop by your local craft shop and I'm sure they have a good inventory or a good selection of, of brushes but anyway a pair of good brushes is essential to do a good job other than that i talked a little bit in the beginning of the video about the oil paints aptalin 502 the colors i use to do weathering my main color is the raw umber and then we have the burnt umber we have the smoke the engine grease we have black and we have dark rust those are my initial selection and those are also the core of what I use for my weathering. I also have the matte effect thinner from Aptalin 502. This is also something that I have here is the AK Interactive. I got their thinner and I got also the streaking grime. These I use paint some spots of uh, leaked fuel or rust streaks or these are very good products too. For this purpose, I like to squirt some oil in a little blister. You can find some stuff around the house or you can have a couple of these cups. Usually you'll find them in fast food restaurants and so I always take a couple more. They're very handy. That's basically all you need. So what I already did, I squirted some raw umber in there just a little bit because a little bit will take you all a long way and also before we start, it's always wise to only do a section at once. Don't try to cover the whole thing at once. You just don't want to lose focus or you don't want to lose track. Sometimes when you do the whole thing and time is running out and you work only on a section, by the time you get on, onto the back, the, the paint is already too dry uh, to manipulate. You might run into a problem. The best thing is to only work in small sections, finish it and then move to the other side. We're gonna start from the top and work our way down. Uh, I'm gonna do some of the thing here. now. I, I will not, in this video, I'm not gonna show the whole thing as far as doing the whole side. I'm just gonna do you a section. The rest will be applied afterwards. I'm just gonna show you some techniques and the process and then the rest you can apply to the whole saucer. Let's start with applying some, some thin raw umber into the panel lines. For that I use a number two brush. It doesn't really matter if you spill a little bit outside the lines because eventually you will wipe it off or blend it in, but just try to at least stay as close as you can to the panel lines and the rivets. If you're not familiar with oil paints, it's always wise to experiment on something other than your model. Now we apply this, and that's why it's also very important after the clear coat that you let it dry for at least 36 hours, if not longer, just to make sure that you don't, while you're wiping it off and while you're working with all the solvents and the thinners and the, and the oil paints, that you're not getting it through the coat of a varnish and damage the paint. So now we're taking a little piece of cloth, piece of a t-shirt, and just gently try to wipe the excess off. And again, don't be afraid that if it, if it looks a little bit messy, because eventually it will all come together. And that's also a good thing about this oil paint. 
that it, it's very forgiving it's very smooth you can work with it a long long time I can already see the result how it's gonna look the first thing that you want to accomplish is to get like the, the faded or the shaded areas around the panel lines later we'll come back and we'll fill those in or we highlight those more this step is just to get the excess off as much as we can so and there you have it we got already our first impression how it's gonna look so now we're gonna emphasize a couple of the panel lines with basically dry brushing the oil paint now it's also when you see there is a little too much darkness here or too much oil paint and it's an excess and it's already dry you can always put a, a tip of thinner a little bit of applying a little bit of thinner here and then just go over the, the spots that you think there's too much oil still left so now we're gonna emphasize with a dry brush, we're gonna weather all the spots or fade all the spots that where we think there's too much oil on there. Also, uh, we dip a clean brush into the oil, wipe it off as much as we can, and then start shading some areas. That's also the, the beauty of the uh, Uptalent 502 oil paint that I mentioned when I started the video and you can also see that the Squadron Minute about this brand that it's a fine pigmentation, it's very smooth, it's excellent for fading or making shadows or streaks. Since flying saucers are weathered flying through space, there is a lot you can do to make it really look like in this condition. You can see all the streaks that are coming down from every nut and bolt all the panel lines I mean you, you need to create like a grimy look again these oils are fantastic in doing that now there are other mediums like uh, there's several washes that you can apply but I just wanted to at least show you one technique that always worked for me hopefully it will give you some ideas what you can do with oils other than just painting figures or anything else oils are a very very grateful medium to apply when you're weathering another good characteristic of oil is as long as it moist and as long as you keep working it you can work it so as long as you want to it will still be prone to whatever you want to do to it it's only when you put it away for let's say 10-15 minutes that you might run into a problem but as long as you keep brushing and as long as you're adding stuff on uh, to your satisfaction you can keep working the oil as long as it takes this is just the basic thing that we do right now but later we'll come back and we're adding some more either a wash or some thin oil into the panel lines and emphasize them a little bit more especially with just little hand holes or whatever it is we can always add a little bit color nuance in there with the darker color i'm going to add some of the ak streaking grime to it We'll try to touch as much rivets as we can and then let it dry and then eventually after let's say five minutes we can go over it with a dry brush and fade it so it doesn't look as prominent anymore and it will blend in with the rest but it will offset the rivets you don't need to do it all over the model because that might be a little bit too much you just do it in certain places where it looks most interesting or at the most effect so now we touched almost all the rivets and now we're gonna with a drier brush we're gonna try to fade as much as we can still leave enough contrast around the panel lines and the rivets to make them pop out. See, the most important thing is that you, instead of wiping, you're dabbing more and all the wash or the oils around the rivets will just blend in with the rest but still leave stark enough contrast to make the rivets pop out. It starts to look more like flying saucer that has been traveling through space quite some time now. And I'm very happy with the results and I must admit that the oils are really making my life a lot easier by being so smooth. So now we have done most of the weathering as far as the oils and the wash. Now I'm gonna do some chipping. The chipping, there are many ways to do this. I still do it the old fashioned way. I use a little bit of printer's ink, but I'm sure if you have some silver oil paint, it works. It will work the same. You don't need much, but I still have a little bit of printer's ink left. And this I mix with raw umber and I'll make a little mix and then I'll try to very gently apply some, some blotches of the paint. It will also break the monotony of the weather. I already have some uh, printer's ink squirted into this little blister here. And now I'm gently gonna dip my brush into the thinner, scoop up some, some oil paint and then uh, mix it with the printer's ink and make a little blend. So chipping is usually done on, in spots where there's a lot of opening hatches or on a lot of friction where uh, meteorites hit the saucer or any other foreign subjects. Well, I'm gonna be very, very gentle and subtle with my chipping because if you do it too much, it becomes 
maybe a little bit too much and it takes away of, of the whole concept. A couple well-placed areas of chipping is a lot nicer than when you do chipping all over because then it really the only thing you will see is silver paint. Just do it a, a little bit around some hatches or around certain panel lines around the gun mount maybe here and there around the windows and that will be it. So yes you can tell here I did a little bit of chipping on this side and uh, I'm gonna be very very subtle with the rest. I don't want to overdo it and if you make a little mistake you just take some thinner and just wipe it off or brush it off. What you really need to pay attention to is that you don't want to make your chipping too bright. That's why you add a lot of uh, raw umber on there. It's like a 50-50 mix. The raw umber will dull the silver. Once you apply it, you will get a really faint sheen, but it's not too catching, so it's not like a lot of silver. You see, you just will see like a weathered effect even in the chipping. I think you get the idea. I'm not gonna show it all because it would take too long. But this is the main technique to do this extreme weathering. Especially because if it's a, fly it's a flying saucer, so in space there's all kind of debris flying around. These vessels, they are or were, let's say, very prone to extreme corrosion of the paint. I'm just gonna leave it like this and I'm gonna do another section of the upper disc of the Hanabu so I can show you that. Those panels are bigger, there is not as much riveting going on. As far as the turret, and the small turret. The result is stunning and again this oil paint is absolutely fantastic to do this. Just give it a try. So let's now concentrate on the, on the upper disc like around the bunker and then a couple uh, panel lines in and I'll show you what you can do or as far as you can go with, with all kind of oils and washes. Again let's uh, apply some oil in the panel lines and around some areas where there's a lot of activity. We uh, went into the panel lines with some thin raw umber now we're going to do the same thing like we did on the bunker. We're going to gently wipe the excess off as much as we can. That's why it's so important to take your time to have the clear coat dry. You don't have to worry that you're going to rub through the clear coat. As long as it's dry enough, you should be fine. These solvents of Aptiling 502 and uh, AK Interactive, they're not as aggressive than normal paint thinners. This is more based on a, on a white spirit than on anything else. So it is very, very forgiving if you have to clean something or wipe something off. See here you, you have it. You're, you can already see that 50% of your weathering is almost done. So now you're just gonna blend in some of the dark spots. Looking pretty good. Very happy with the result so far. There's so much you can do with oil paint and as long as you have a strong clear coat, when you make a mistake you can easily wipe it off again and start over. So it's very important that you respect your dry times either with the paint or with the clear coat. Now I'm gonna emphasize a couple more panel lines just to make them pop out and I'm going to use the interactive, the AK interactive again because it's a lot darker. So as you can see here, we have already a section done. I'm going to do it off camera, I'm going to do the rest the same way. But I used is the raw umber from Aptalin 502 and some of the interactive. Now this can easily be replaced by a wash with black, a humbral black or anything or even with black oil paint. I'm going to wrap it up right now. I'm going to do some chipping like I demonstrated before on the turret. Other than that maybe add a couple rust streaks. When we come back I'll talk a little bit more about it. In the next chapter we're going to do the landing gear and the final assembly. Until then, Jeffy here signing off.